Hey folks, this is our How to Play Zeppeldrome video for Kickstarter. Uh, it's got the playtest art. The final art will be nicer, of course, but for now, this will give you a better idea of how to play the game. This board is already set up. The game comes with 12 different hazards that you can choose from. The way that we normally do that is each section, A, B, C, and D, has a set of cards which match the hazards available in that section. So you just mix them up, choose one, that's the one that you would play in that section. Do that for each section. You can set it up however you like. You could even shorten the board, have a shorter game, if you so desire. Whatever you like. The game is for two to four players. Each player would get their movement cube, their flight plan cover, and then in the base game we'll have chits like these with nice images of dirigibles for your playing piece. In this copy we have little pawns. If we meet some stretch goals then we'll have uh, nicer bits in the game. And the game starts with each player randomly being placed at the start line. Before we go any further, let's talk about doing things in sequence. Moving dirigibles and playing cards in the game is done in turn order, starting with the lead player. This player is closer to the finish line, so the yellow player is in the lead. They would move the dirigible first, they also play cards first, followed by the red player. If you're in the same column, then the player toward the top of the board, so you've got the clouds up here and the mountains down there, they're in the lead. So in this case you've got yellow, red, blue, and green. All right. In this case we would have yellow, red, green, then blue. The top third of your card is a flight plan. You track your flight plan with your movement cube. Place a movement cube on the dirigible. When it's your turn to move, first you move the cube, then you move your dirigible. You move your cube, then you move your dirigible. Each step follows the flight path. Many of your cards have options. In this case, for instance, your first move is going to have to be forward. Then your second move, you have a choice of either going straight up or up and forward. And you choose. If I go straight up, now the rest of my flight plan has to follow this path. Another kind of option you have is this clear arrow. Once I've moved down to this spot, I now have a choice of going forward or down. If I go forward, that's just fine. I don't have anything extra to deal with. If I go down, since I have that clear arrow, in order to do that, I have to discard a card out of my hand to pay for that little option there. So we do that. I discard a card from my hand, and then I continue to follow the rest of this path. During movement, you're going to encounter obstacles and hazards. Of course, the other players are obstacles. You can't go off the course, and each board has something going on. If you were going to move, and that movement would make you go into a dirigible, you move your movement cube, on the card, but you don't move the dirigible. You just kind of bounce off. Same thing happens if the movement is going to move you off of the course. You just bounce. Most obstacles are like this. In the chunk chunk machine, you bounce. The four old folks going to the farmer's market, you bounce. The difference is what happens on these different tiles. For example, here in the chunk chunk machine, the last place player decides if this symbol is closed for the turn or this symbol is closed for the turn. So when you're up in this area and the green player says, you know what, I'm going to make all of these open areas, those are going to be open for the turn and the closed areas are, cl are closed. The four old folks going to the farmer's market, they are also controlled by the last place player. In this case, blue can decide where to move the old folks. They can move them one space in any direction. 
There are a few other rules having to do with, with the old folks. But in essence, the last place player can block leading players with the movement of the four old folks. Back here in the headwinds, you can't take any forward movement. So if your flight plan has you moving forward, you just don't move. You can move diagonally forward. That's okay. But once you're going to move forward again, you can't do that. Over here in the bits to ballast, if you land on one, you can ignore it if you want. Or you can pick it up. Your airship drops down one spot. And then you have this ballast to use before or after you move to move up one space. That can be pretty handy. Each of the other boards have special rules. An inspiration point, if you end your turn on any of these spaces, you get to draw extra cards. Here in Slalom 1, you must move through your own hoop. You bounce off of anybody else's hoop. The press boxes are just in the way, part of the puzzle of the game, to figure out how to get around them and stay in the lead. Or get in the lead. In the tragic lemming migration, the last place player will be moving lemmings down down and down. When they fall off the, the end, they become lemmings that you can move up to the top and move them down, blocking players in the lead. And so on with the other boards available. In the Ravenous Fans, for example, if you land on your own color, then you get an extra move in any direction. If you land on someone else's color, then the next move in your flight plan is negated. So here's the sequence of play. In most turns, players will have four cards in their hand. They look at the cards to decide what flight plan they're going to play for the turn. They can't ignore the bottom of the cards, however, because those are actions that they're going to be able to play later. If they play a card for the flight plan, they're not going to be able to play that action later. Maybe they want to keep that action to play. Players pick their card. They put them face down in front of them. And then simultaneously turn them face up. nice to turn them the way that the board is facing helps everybody out. What also helps folks out is you cover up your flight plan with your flight plan cover. This makes it clear to everybody which card is yours. Now you take the remaining cards in your hand and you look at the actions to see whether or not you want to play them. Let's talk about cards. Any card may be played on any player. Sometimes even a really good card could be played on an opponent because even though it's good, it's going to mess up their flight for the turn and that's bad. A very common thing for cards to do is to add more movements to a captain's flight plan. Sir James's cheap ass engine, for example, adds three mo movement behind a player's flight plan. That's what the FP here stands for, that's a flight plan. The game comes with these handy chits that you can use to add to your flight plan. This one here can indicate up, or back, or down, or forward. In this case we need it up. That's the first added vector to the captain's flight plan. I'm going to put it down right there, after the flight plan. And this one can be back and up, back and down, forward and down, and forward and up. Sir James's cheap ass engine needs a forward and up. I'm going to put it right there. And then we have a forward at the end. Here's another example. Scary lightning. Here you have a choice. You've got the word or. You can either do a down and a back before the flight plan, or a down and a back after the flight plan. This symbol means that you can choose one of any direction. In this case, faster pedaling allows you to choose any two to go before your flight plan, or any two to go after your flight plan, or another player's. The bang symbol means that it happens right now, during the card play step. Usually movement is reserved until the movement step, but if you play a card with a bang, then it happens right away. And lastly, a red X means that you remove a vector chip. Players play cards as much as they like, in sequence, until every player has passed in a sequence. If any one player plays a card in the sequence, everybody will get a turn in the next card play. After all the players are done, if there are any board elements controlled by the last place player, he or she decides what happens with them. And then all the players move, one step at a time, in sequence. 
let's look at an example of movement with two players. During card play, the red player ended up with two vector chits behind his flight plan, and the yellow player ended up with two vector chips before her flight plan. You take your movement cube and either put it on the zeppelin or on the first chip. In this case, yellow is in the lead. She takes her first move, which is up and back. Now red moves. Red has a choice of going down or up if he plays a card or forward. Red needs to get through this hoop, so he's going to pay his card and move up. Now red is in the lead because yellow had to move back. So for this next move, red goes first. Red moves the movement cube, moves forward. Now yellow. Moving off the chit, yellow moved onto the card. Now red goes. And yellow. They're both through their hoops. It's almost like we planned it that way. Now red's going to move their last move on the card, which moves his cube to his first chip. Now yellow. Red had adjusted the chunk chunk machine to have this symbol be open. That allows him to make his next move. Yellow, on the other hand, is going to bounce. Then red bounces off the top, yellow bounces again, and they're done. Clean everything up, and they're ready for the card draw step. Discard any cards you don't like, fill your hand back up to four, and then play your card for the next turn. The first player to make it to the finish line is the winner. And that's the basics of play. There are a couple of boards we didn't tell you about, and remember, this is just the play test art, but you should have a pretty good idea of the flow of the game now. It's about choosing your path for the turn and then playing your other cards on yourself or on the other players to help you or to hinder them. Thanks for watching.